veterinary is afterwards. Okay, so it is my pleasure to introduce our today's speaker. This is uh, Professor Denis Denisov. Uh, he graduated from the same university as myself, Novosibirsk State University, but a few years later, in 2001. Uh, then he continued his studies under the same supervisor, Professor Sergei Foss, at the uh, Heriot Watt University, uh, and he got his PhD in 2004 with the topic of the thesis being a mark of chains and random walks with uh, heavy uh, tail jumps. After that, Denise worked for, I think, three years at URandom, then spent some time uh, in Cardiff, and then for the last five or six years, he's working at Manchester University. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maybe, Denise, maybe you close the door, just in case, sorry for asking you to do that, but since you are the lecturer, right, everything is done by yourself. Okay, so today Denise will start uh, his short course, altogether it's six hours, the topic being random walks with constraints, so please. Okay, so thank you, question, for the introduction and thank you for the invitation, so it's a pleasure to visit Melbourne and to give this short course. So, uh, I gave this course probably four years ago, jointly with Vitaly Vaktiv, and what's going to be now is going to be a shortened version of that course that we gave in Novosibirsk. In Novosibirsk we had like ten hours for our lectures here, I had six, and also since that time we made some improvements and hopefully I'm going to include those improvements into this course. Right, so let me briefly describe what I'm going to talk about. So basically, um, I will be talking about uh, random box. Well, it's not the notation which I'm going to use is this one. I'm going to be talking about random box on some unbounded domains of the space. Okay, so. What I'm aiming to do, I'm aiming to talk about cones in dimensions 2 and higher, but I will start with a half line, with a positive half line. So that's um, D greater or equivalent to, and the starting point will be in dimension 1. Now uh, I will be talking about several things. So first of all, I will be talking about exit times of these random walks. So let's uh, denote this somehow so tell. So if our domain is K, then so if our domain is K, then I will be talking about uh, the exit time from this domain. So I'm not interested what will happen after the random walk exits. I will be interested mostly what happens when the random walk is inside the domain. So that's why we're talking about constraints. That's um, the first thing. And in particular, I will be talking about asymptotics. For uh, probability that tau greater than n, but n is going to infinity. Okay, so that's one of the topics I'm going to look at. Now, the next thing which is connected to this topic will be um, a construction of conditional random box. So I will condition my random walk to stay in this domain a very long time and then I will explain what we will see as a result, so what kind of process we are going to obtain as a result. And finally, uh, 
I will be also talking about limit theorems for ambition random books. Okay, so these are three things which I will be looking at. Now, um, uh, let me talk about the spaces next. So, um, so first I will consider the case of the, the one-dimensional random block and mainly from the, for the educational point of view. So the results here are classical and I just want to explain how you can uh, prove those results using the classical winner hope factorization. So this is something which is well known. Well, I think Costa probably knew this at school from his father, who, is, who was one of the pioneers of the winner hope factorization. And effectively, uh, this is a classical approach which works really well for the positive half life. Okay, so that's uh, something which I will consider in the first two or three or three lectures. So let's let's call it A. So plan A is one dimensional random box. One dimensional random box. And well then uh, classical methods. And well, I will move them to multi-dimensional random blocks. Random blocks. And here uh, we will have a problem. So the problem is the following. So the classical methods are no longer available. So this linear properization is really a power, powerful thing. But it works only in one dimension. Well, you can you can do something in higher dimensions, but for very limited domains. So it's, it's something really specific. And what I will try to do, I will try to explain how you can use universality approach and this basically means that I want to make use of the fact that random walk converges to the Brownian motion and then to use the results which have been obtained for the Brownian motion to obtain to prove something for the random walk. So that's so this is what I call universal. Now um so before before I start so let me tell you what the main problem is, the main difficulty. As I said, so I want to transfer the results for the Brownian motions to the results for random walks. Now, uh, for the Brownian motion, well, you have a number of methods. So in one dimension, for example, if you talk about tau, dimension one, you can use reflection principle to find exact distribution of the exit time. You can use exponential martingale to find exact distribution of the exit time. Well, you can use probably some other methods as well. Now, um, even if you look at dimension one, then you can see immediately the difficulty that arises. So if you consider the Brownian motion, then um, Brownian motion is a nice continuous process and when it exits domain, you know that, well, if we are talking about positive half line, so if you exit to the negative half line, you know that you're going to be at zero. Okay, so that's a continuous process. You cannot escape this possibility. Now, I can tell you the main difficulty. Well, for the random work, it's in general no longer the case. So you can start here, then you might have chance and then what happens is that my random walk, which is one dimensional, has exited the positive half line at this moment of time. 
but the position is unknown, right? So I have uh, what I will call another shoot. So that's another shoot. And in general, in general, so the random walk has this difficulty, right? So here you need to keep track about you need to keep track of two random variables exit time and also another natural random variable is this one. So you really don't want near a scenario random walk? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, even for the nearest neighbor random walk, uh, you will come into trouble if you consider two-dimensional case yeah, because this nearest neighbor is not that nearest neighbor anymore. So you will still have this problem that you will exit some of the domains with the jump, right? Yes. So still you can more probably change the domain to the yes. yeah. But yeah, yeah, well if all those random works were near snap, then probably there will there be any need for the winner of authorization. But well other random works are responsible. Right. Yeah. Alright, so so that was an introduction. Now let's move to our first section, uh, random work on positive half. Clarify that for you, a random walk is just a sum of IID random variables. It doesn't matter, they have mean zero, they might not even have a finite mean. Well, they will, so, so the random walks which I'm going to consider will have mean zero and finite variance. I will yeah, clarify okay. this a little bit, but we can start off with any random walk because, well, so those are very ba basic notions. Uh, let's call it section. One. So they will be defined even if the mean does not exist, well for any random block. So let's let's set up the same. Oh, so Mark already told you what I'm going to talk about, but I will just repeat. Okay, so that's now so we'll have a sequence of ID random variables. Dependent and uh, they can add it to the three random variables. And in the beginning, I will consider a classical random walk, which is defined walk as n, uh, defined for integers n as follows. Well, S0 is equal to 0. I will start first at zero, but then this will change. And then ascend the sound of the sum of these random variables. Okay, so no assumptions at the moment. But they will follow very soon. Now uh, for this random work, so as I explained, the basic thing is what to do. What can we do about this overshoot? And somehow this justifies the introduction of these uh, classical notions, uh, so called ladder time, uh, ladder times, or epochs. And uh, ladder. Lights and processes. Okay, so these are two processes which I will 
uh, introduce shortly. So basically, let's start uh, with the letter of time. So suppose we have a random work. We have something that starts at zero. Right, so it jumps, then it, uh, crosses the, it, it crosses the positive half line, and then I'm going to call uh, this first moment when it becomes negative. So tau 1 is the first time and greater or equal than 1 when a random form becomes less than zero. Okay, so that's the definition. Uh, so tau one is this moment of time. So let's call it tau one. And then I can define recursively a sequence of such stopping times. Okay, so this is um, so this is called first two. Here, this is a descending letter time. Okay, so tau 1 will be the first time when my random walk becomes negative. Then I can define tau 2 as the first time. So I start my new random walk here again, and that's going to be the first time when this new random walk will become negative. Or, in other words, that's the first time when this new random walk will, uh, when my original random walk will, will become smaller than this thing, right? So formally, tau 2 will be uh, the minimum of n greater or equal than 1, such that s tau 1 plus n is less than zero. Okay, so that's um, my tau 1 on this picture. This is my tau 2, and so on. So this thing is tau 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, now I said, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you can write the general formula. You want to do it? 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 You Now, uh, well, because of the strong Markov property, well, please check <laughs> whether this is strong. <laughs> no, it should be tau k, k minus 1 on the right, uh, in, on the left hand side. Yeah. Otherwise, it's recursively referring to itself. Yeah, so S. Here. Yeah. K minus 1 there. Yeah. K minus 1. Yeah. Okay, it should be some. If, if the increments, it should be the sum of the tones. Where should it be the sum? Uh, S at time, the sum of the tones plus N. So you start counting. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so... So you must have changed notation midway. <laughs> yes. I Do you want the tails to be increasing? No. Nah, yeah, yeah, so, so it's not... It should be T capital in here. Okay, yeah. so let's yeah. let's change this a little bit. Mm. S tau one plus tau k minus one plus n plus 
S L1 plus L1. Right, and what Costa was saying is that I should have introduced a different notation, and I will do it now. So I should have introduced T1, which is equal to tau1, T3 is equal to tau1 plus tau2, Tk is equal to tau1 plus plus. Okay, and then I will have this trouble of writing on those long things. Okay. Now, um, so what we can say is that uh, since it's a random work, so all the increments are IED. Oh, well, by the strong mark of property, property tau 1, tau 2, and so on. So these random variables are IED. Okay, so that's the first comment. Now, the second one is what might happen is that not necessarily tau 1 is finite. So sometimes tau 1 can be infinite and then we just stop this process at this moment of time. Okay, so tau 1 in general is an improper random variable. Now, uh, so these are, um, so as a result we're going to obtain the process T which might terminate the process T and this is so-called ladder times process. Okay, so that's the uh, first process which appears very naturally in those types. And then there is a process which corresponds to this process, the process of ladder heights. So what happens is that um, so my, when my random walk crosses level zero, so this is my overshoot, and I'm gonna denote it as T1. Then uh, the next time it, it goes below this point, I will have another overshoot, which I will call, I will be calling T2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so again, by the same reasoning, T1, T2, and so on, are I, I, D, random variables. I, D, random variables, so that's one thing. So next uh, thing, so they are defined only if tau1 is finite, so only if we have this overshoot, these variables will be defined. And then we can define process HK. So HK will be defined as follows. That's H and changes from 0 to plus H. Infinity where H naught is equal to 0, H1 is equal to E1. H2 is equal to T1 plus T2 and so on. Or I can also write this in a very short way. Um, Hn is equal to minus Stn on the event Tn less than so if Tn is less than infinity, so that's going to be my uh, ladder height. Okay, so that's called uh, ladder height process, by the way. Well, in principle, was well, some people do. You can just consider them together, HM comma TN, and then you're going to get a bivariate process. And this process is a renewal process because the times between 
those events happen are IAD random variables and well for the annual process yeah it is natural to define a renewal function and this renewal function will be quite useful. So maybe use the second one? Okay, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's try the second one. So I will call this function v of x. v of x is the renewal function of h. So basically by definition for x greater or equal than zero we put v of x to be equal to the sum from zero to plus infinity probability that h is less or equal than x. Okay, so that's that's not the standard annual sum. Uh, well, basically, if you recall the definition of h m, that's just h one plus h m less or equal than x. Okay, so that's you just count how many renewals you have in the interval r zero x. Okay, so that's function. So this function will be used. Uh, sorry, sorry, Denis. If the highs are improper, random variables. Uh, right. So this might happen as well. So then, well, in this case, it's going to be a terminating renewal process. So then, we just. So how is it defined then, the renewal function? If well, if if the highs are defined not on the whole. Uh, yeah, yeah, so just count those which are which, which have been defined, that's all. Okay. But well again, don't worry about improper random variables, we won't have okay. them at, at all so because I will very soon introduce my assumptions and these assumptions I don't exclude improper random variables. Okay, so what What's defined is the descending ladder height and ladder times processes and the corresponding renewal function. Then, very similarly, you can define ascending ladder height and time process just by considering the times of going up. So that's um, the second type of process that you can consider. Also, uh, there is um, a minor problem which arises because distribution might have atoms. So in this case, there is also a weak ascending and descending ladder processes, which means that um, uh, so weak ascending ladder time process is well generated by tau one tilde, which is the first time when a sum is less or equal to zero. Okay, so. so in this case the first type of process is gonna be called strict or uh, strict. I think there is another synonym as well. Another process. Okay, so that's uh, so these um, standard are uh, finished. So now, uh, why why am I saying that we should not be worried about the improper random variables? So basically. Uh, I will state uh, this fact as a theorem. So there is a connection uh, between these ladder variables and random work. So basically, uh, 
there are two types random of random walks. There are two types of random walks. Um, so the first type is oscillating random walks. Oscillating. Uh, for which uh, probability that lim sn is up, upper limit sn is equal to plus infinity is the same as lower limit sn is equal to minus infinity and is equal to 1. So random walk fluctuates between minus and plus infinity. Now if you look at this picture, this means that if random walk will go, if, if we have, if we take a subsequence which goes to so plus infinity, so then, well, in order to somehow, for this subsequence, in order to go to plus infinity, we should have some kind of increasing sub subsequence, right? And this is increasing sub subsequence will correspond to tau one, and this will mean that uh, tau one is finite with probability. Okay. So in this case, probability that tau less than infinity is equal to 1. So the probability that it goes, it will eventually leave the positive of line is 1. And also probability that tau plus, so the probability that it will go to the upper half plane is equal to 1 as well. Okay, so I haven't introduced tau plus, but well, that's the same thing, but for going up. Okay, so that's uh, one thing, and also expectation of tau plus is equal to expectation of tau is equal to plus infinity, and also supremum of this random work is equal to minus infimum of the random walk and is equal to plus infinity almost sure. So that's um, the oscillating situation and this situation will be of main interest for me. Okay, so that's um, so this situation is probably more delicate than the second situation. The second situation is uh, the case when the random walk uh, goes to plus or minus infinity. So the second case is Sn going to plus infinity almost surely, or symmetrically Sn going to minus infinity almost surely. Sn goes to minus infinity almost surely. So in this case, so when this happen, when this happens, uh, probability that tau plus less than infinity is one, but a probability that tau less than infinity is less than one. So the ascending ladder process will not terminate, so it's gonna be it's gonna have a countable number of points as a result, but descending ladder process is gonna terminate at some point. So what, what it means is that you're gonna have infimum and then the after this infimum the random walk will go to plus infinity and never, never returns. Okay, so these are two, basically two situations. Now, uh, now I'm going to make the main assumption for the rest of this section. about random variables assumption. So the 
assumption which I'm going to use is that expectation of x1 is equal to 0 and variance of x1 is 1. Okay, so you can put any number as variance, it doesn't matter, but you can always rescale. Now this assumption guarantees. So under this assumption, under this assumption, the random walk is of type 1, which means that it is oscillating. Okay, so that's so that's the case which I'm going to consider as well. Okay, so I've, so I've introduced all the notions which I need. So now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, give a result without a proof. I will probably, uh, I will without proof first, maybe I will give a proof or maybe some discuss this proof depending on time next week but at the moment I'm going to just state this result okay so basically I'm um, using the time reversal and that's something which I will discuss next week uh, one can prove so one can prove that um, we have uh, the following nice formula so one minus expectation e to the power minus i so that's square root of minus one i t e one so that's um, first letter height times z to the power one tau one on the event that tau one less than plus infinity so we are not so we don't care about this event in fact but I'll put it just because this is always true. Uh, this is equal to x exponent minus the sum from 1 to plus infinity z to the power k over k expectation e to the power r t that's k s k plus then zero okay so that's a magic formula so out of curiosity why do you bother doing something complex here since your side of chi is non-negative i mean so i mean you can do this but uh, uh, wait a second so why am i doing what what, what why why use a complex exponential in here when your random variable is non-negative? You can just... Uh, yes, you can... So basically this comes from the fact how this formula was obtained. So what you have here is so-called factor, uh, one factor of the Wiener-Hopf factorization. And this okay. Wiener, yeah, so the, and this Wiener-Hopf factorization is obtained by considering the full plane and then you take uh, one factor on when the imaginary part is greater or equal than zero, another factor when the imaginary part is less or equal than zero and basically they, they will correspond well so that's one factor of the Wiener Hopf factorization. Then there is another factor which is symmetric for the positive uh, letter height. Oh, there is even simple answer there is SK on the right hand side in the explanation. So, highs could have one sign, but SK can have any sign. And here it's negative. Well, well, 
well here, well a scale is negative, yeah, yes. Which makes things worse. In, in gen yes, in general. Okay. And this is for real t and z not exceeding one in absolute value, I suppose, yeah? Uh, I think so here t might have imaginary part of t. Wait a second. So if you look at this expression, then we might have minus the imaginary part of t for this expression can be less or equal than zero. For this to be always true. Now if you plug in here. No, then you're in trouble. Yes, and you're in trouble. Yes. So and it should be real. Real T, indeed. So, that, so we should consider only real T for this expression. Indeed. Okay, so this is called, uh, well, at least in some books, it's called Baxter formula. And, well, it's also sometimes it's called Baxter Spitzer formula. So Baxter. Now, now what, what is nice about this formula? So basically, uh, on the left-hand side, um, the, on the left-hand side, well, I have the generating functions of my overshoot and of my exit time. So that's something which I want to analyze. So basically, my first task will be to analyze the asymptotics for tower one. And on the right-hand side, on the right hand side, I have a formula which involves just the random walk. So basically, I'm able, using this formula, I'm able to derive something about my ladder variables from the original data. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the first thing which I'm going to do. Now, I will hopefully talk about this formula next week, but if not, then I can give you uh, a reference to a short derivation of this formula. So, um, that's uh, Greenwood and Hitman. That's uh, 79, I think, 79 for a short derivation. And of course, uh, well, I learned this uh, formula from the book of Borovkov, so one of the reincarnations of this book. So uh, I don't know which one is the latest, probably 2008, I think, the, late, the latest edition. So one of the editions, so the book is called Probability. And of course, uh, theory, probability theory. Probability theory. Yep. It's book. <laughs> it's just uh, called Shirev. probability. Yes. <laughs> probability theory. It's Shirev's book. I think it doesn't have. It's just probability. Yes. And then, of course, Feller, volume two, and another book to check is Spitzer, Principles of Planning. So this is indeed classical form. Okay, and now uh, so the next derivation which I am going to do is classical as well. So it belongs to Spitzer. And uh, so I want to find the symptotics for tau 1, and I'm going to do it in two steps. And when I thought about this, this is quite a typical thing to happen. So these two steps procedure. So first, I will uh, find two steps. So step one, find expectation of E. So what I will show is that expectation of E of the overshoot under these assumptions is finite, and I find some formula <coughs> for this expectation. 
And in principle, this formula will allow us to compute the value of expectation of E. Well, probably not by hand, but with a good computer, it should not be a problem. And step two, uh, asymptotics. Probability tau greater than n. So, so I was thinking about this for the following reason. So basically, this is a classical, really a classical approach. So this was done by Spitzer in the 60s, maybe earlier. And uh, when we consider this multidimensional case, then basically the approach in some sense is the same. So first, again, we find expectation of some function of the overshoot. That's exactly the same step one here. And then we use this knowledge to find the symptotics of probability tau greater than f. Okay, so, so somehow you need to control the overshoot. If you can do it, then the rest is actually easier. So the rest of the task is easier than uh, finding some information about overshoot. Right, so should I stop now? Or? Five minutes are convenient. Either now or in five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll just take the theorem and then we'll stop. Okay. I will do the, I will, I'm going to do the proof after the break. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. 